mateys, you ready to plunder some booty? Sea of thieves, blunderbuss and booze, dogfights over Davy Jones' locker, and pillaging the spoils of victory. Alas, a cover of basics of this scurvy game, where ye booty's the best booty. I'll teach you how to be a true pirate, so you will not be just a scallywag plugging some holes. Hi everybody, this is Fumbles. I'm going to be walking you through this tutorial starting with matchmaking. In matchmaking you do have three options. You have a full crew, which is four people. You have duo, which is you and one other. And then of course solo. In a full crew, this is great for whenever you want to get into dogfights out there, fight other ships, steal their loot. It's great to have a team. It does take a little longer to get some stuff done if you're in a random group. If you're with a bunch of friends, then yeah, definitely go for it. Duo. It's a little bit more less clustered. It's just you and one rando. You usually can pull off some good stuff. But if you really want to go into a more direct approach for your treasure hunting and getting that rep up, solo is a great way if you don't want to play with a bunch of randos as well. So we're going to get started with some of the in-game tutorial. First off, we're going to start with a little bit of controls. So your obvious movement, ASWD left right backwards and forward and if you hold shift while moving it's also your sprint outside of that to change your weapons with your mouse wheel you can scroll up and down change to all your different weapons looking down scope is holding down your right clip don't mind the storm to fire your primary is your left click and this game does have bullet drops, so when you're aiming at a distance, make sure you're using the right weapon and prepare for the bullet drop. Sword play. You can block using your secondary, which again is going to be your right click, and you can attack with primary, your left click, and then you can also hold down to initiate a thrust, which does have a stamina loss, so you're kind of vulnerable for a moment. Swords are also nice for when you get in for stun locking. Granted, they can recover and strike back, and then you will have vulnerabilities while striking. Alright, so next we're going to be talking about your HUD. Your HUD, simple, bottom left hand corner is going to be your health bar. You will only see it once you take damage. I got struck by lightning a second ago, so that's why I've got some health loss. For your bottom right hand side, that's going to be how many rounds you have for each gun. Each gun carries five bullets. Use them sparingly in your fights. The last thing you want to do is run out of ammo because you can only refill them at crates, which is going to be located on your boats or enemy boats. Next, you'll have your radials, which E is going to pull up for your treasure map so you can see where things are located and follow your clues. And Q is going to be your primary, which is going to have your bananas for healing, your cannonballs for filling up cannons. I just got struck by lightning again. Your planks for fixing holes in the boats, which we'll go over later. You have your scope to look down, see from distance. Shovel for digging up your treasure. Again, we'll talk about that later. Lanterns for when it's dark to be able to see. This bucket, well, it's meant for a lot of things. You can puke in a bucket and throw in people's faces to blind them. Or you can scoop out the water out of your sinking boat so you don't sink. You have your compass. Which lets you know which direction you're going. Spiffy. You hit F, it'll give you more options. This is your tankard, so you can sit there and get drunk. You can refill it on your boat or at a tavern. You have your xylophones, or accordion rather. Play some music. Your loot, and you have a watch. That way you can see what time of day it is. You also have a radio wheel for emotes, which is Z. You can do different options. You also have G. This one, it changes depending on what you have out. I have a pistol drawn, so I can say if I have a pistol drawn. If you have a mic, you don't even have to worry about using these, obviously. But there are plenty of options to sit here and say, I thanks, round, no. That way you can communicate with people that don't have mics. Depending, like I said, which weapon you have out, it changes your options. If you're on the boat, it'll change your options as well. It's stuff you can play around with and learn. Next, we're going to be talking about the outpost. Outpost is going to be the main hub in the game. It's where you're going to be going to turn in your treasure chest, to buy things, all your vendors are located here. 
So your vendors, you do have your first one, which is your clothing. So if you want to come in here and spend your hard-earned booty, or say your money from booty, you can get different outfits. This is beta, so there's most likely more to come. Your next vendor is going to be equipment. This vendor sells various things from different lanterns, loot, shovels, etc. The most important item you can get from here is going to be your blunderbuss. This is honestly one of the first items you should really get. Why? It's an extra gun. It doesn't take up a slot. It has its own place, so it gives you an extra weapon, meaning extra rounds, meaning you're going to have a little bit more chance to win your fights. It costs 960 gold, so you definitely want to rack up and grab a hold of that. So this one's not technically a vendor, but it is a place you can go to with your friends. This is the tavern, so you come here, take your tankard, and you can refill it. Get some alcohol, get drunk with some buddies. Getting drunk, you will wobble around, and you will end up puking, which you can use that bucket for to fill up so you can throw it in someone's face. Very good at blinding. Lastly, this is the most important one. This is your rep vendor. This is your bread and butter of the game. If you want to make money to buy your outfits, the blunderbuss, or any other items that you would like to get a hold of, you have to talk to this guy. First off, he will start off with some easy ones, and it will be free. So you can pick that one up, do your first missions, rack up some money. As you rank up with him, and your reputation increases, you unlock more things. The, more you, the higher you get up, the more challenging and more costly the map will be. Now we get to the more fun stuff. This is your ship. So we're going to the ship part of the tutorial. On your ship, depending on what you are, since this is solo, we have a smaller ship, which is up for two people. It'll be the same ship as it will be on duo, as it will be on solo. You have a galleon, which has eight cannons total versus two. And again, there's a four-man team. So your first bucket, so you see these, is going to be your cannonballs. Which you can load up in here. And fire away. Takes a little practice to get the aim down when shooting, but making contact with these on a ship can be pretty deadly. Underneath, this is where you refill your ammo, which is what we talked about. So whenever you go through, all enemy ships have them, and my ship took on some damage. So I guess we'll be able to show you some other things. So whenever you have your heavy rains, it will fill up your boat as well. And you can take out your trusty bucket and start scooping the water out. The more water is in, obviously you'll sink. Underneath, this is where you can restock on your bananas. So if you need some while you're out, you can always come down here. You can have some more health. These are where your wood planks will be taken. So you can take out your wood planks and you will fix holes that will be anywhere on your boat that will be leaking, leaking water. Lightning strikes, hitting rocks, or of course your fellow pirates out there shooting at you can pop holes in here. Here's your tankard if you want to get drunk on ship. Your clothing chest, which you can open up and choose different articles of clothing if you would like. It's your equipment chest. So for instance, I have my gold shovel. So if I wanted to use it, now I have my fancy gold shovel. The next part, which is going to be important for navigation, you have your map. As I said, this is one outpost. There are several other outposts located throughout the ocean. Whenever you're hovering around, you can actually use your left mouse click, create a circle just in case you wanted to come back to the map and not forget which island it is so you can see which island you need to go to from a further distance without the name your treasure whenever you have your treasure map you come over here to this table whenever you are in a group you have to vote on which one you want and you put your voyage up here so let's say we're gonna slap this one down since it's just me well my votes the only boats once you do that when we said about E, it pulls up your treasure map. You can use this to figure out where you need. So as you see this one, it doesn't give you names or anything. You just have to kind of find out what it looks like. And you would use this map to locate 
It can take a little bit to find it. You just scroll around until you find out which one it is. Generally, they're pretty close, especially if it says it's only a day away or so. For instance, Laguna Whispers. As you go on, you will kind of learn all of the names so you know exactly what map you're looking at and you just know where to go. You also get some other treasure chests or treasure maps that will give you the actual name of the island and it will be clue based. And now we're going to learn how to navigate your boat. So first off, to take off you need to raise the anchor. With two people it goes much faster when you're by yourself. It can be a little time consuming. The next thing you need to do is drop cell. And if you look up, you can also see the wind. And if you can't really tell which way it's going, if you actually look at the flag, it'll tell you which way the wind's going. That'll come and play with this next part. Let's get out in the open ocean. This here will actually angle your cell so you can make sure you're not going too slow and catch the wind. Helps speed you up. While driving, and you know that you need to go north, south, east, west to whichever island you're needing to go to for your voyage, there's a compass to your right. You can use that to navigate. Keep in mind, if you get off track, you do have to end up running back down and checking your map. So for instance, we're taking off, but we need to go south. So we just come up here, set sail for south. If you see this golden handle, that means whenever you have a point, you hear that click going over, you're at a full turn. Same for the opposite way. Once it clicks, full turn. To straighten up, if you want to go completely straight, you go center, you hear it click, and now you know you're going straight ahead. Okay, so I went ahead and hit a rock. That way I can show you what it's like when you need to repair your boat. First off, you will fill with water from holes that are put anywhere on your boat. You need to scoop out the water, and then you also need to take out your plank. If you don't have any, you can take it from here. And plug your hole. As you can tell, I hit a rock pretty hard. So, I'm going to need to repair a lot of holes. Once you're done repairing, just make sure to scoop out the rest of your water. And your boat's in tip-top shape to continue sailing or continue your fight. Now, if you're doing this solo and you're fighting, it can be kind of rough to fix and fire. So the next thing I can show you is some advanced tactics that you can use. So let me raise our anchor again. There's a few things you can do. Starting off with boarding other people's ship while driving. So if you ram, if you have a place where you're going to ram into them, you can jump onto the top, of the front of the boat. And as you're getting ready to hit, right when you smack into them, jump off and you can board their boat and start fighting. Swords, gun, whatever it is that you would like to do. Another fun thing is if you need to make a quick 360 to turn your cannons or if you need to just stop and place your boat well. Dropping your anchor, you just walk up, press F, it'll instantly drop you. You do not have to sit there and walk the wheel. So let's say I want to do a 360, or close to a 360, you can turn my wheel all the way around, drop anchor, and you'll notice the boat will actually swing once it hits. So if you're in a fight and you need to be able to straighten up on somebody, you can use that to your advantage. One other tip when you're driving a boat, especially solo, or even in your galleon with a crew, if you do not want to be seen at night, you want to try to be a little bit more stealthy, you can turn off all your lanterns. This will help if you want to try to get the sneak up on somebody. 
and you're not seen from a far distance, or if you're just trying to get all your booty to the rep vendor without being attacked by another pirate and then boarding your ship, stealing all your stuff, or sinking you, simply go stealth mode. Moving on ahead to treasure hunting. So as we marked on the map where we were going earlier, we're pulling up to the island now that has our treasure. One thing to be smart about, especially when you're solo, make sure to check out that there's no other ships here. So the last thing you want to do is let them see that you have a ship or a treasure chest and then them blow up your ship. Take any loot you have or the loot you're trying to gather. So the next part now that we got here a little small bit of advice you can look at where you are so this is going to show you where your treasure is that X marks the spot the easiest way to do this if you look at your map you can zoom in and out with your mouse wheel and we notice that we are on the east side of the island and it's over there at that very bottom port so we are going to go to that small little isle we're gonna go find a treasure but about again you do have other things you can have to fight one being pirates the other being skeletons the skeletons do not cross water so if you're across way and it's over deep end they won't come after you so our treasure is here on this little part somewhere so we're gonna pull out our shovel and right off the bat strike it pro status is much quicker when you have multiple people when you're by yourself you just take your time and all you do from here is just pick up put on your boat and you're good to go you can explore the island sometimes you'll find other chests as well as restocking which we will cover right now so let's say your boat needs more planks you can pick up more planks and you can store them back in that bucket you took planks out of same with cannonballs and bananas So we are now going to go put our hard-earned treasure chest up on our boat. Now, th that voyage itself was not complete. Whenever you get up to the higher rep, you will get ones that will have multiple chapters, and you'll go through and complete them all. This one is one that will tell you where to go at the beginning, and you will follow the clues. Which, we won't go over in this tutorial, because I don't want to ruin all the surprises, and also it takes, I think it takes some time. Now we're going to go and take our loot to our rep vendor so we can increase our rep and get some gold. Now I thought you might want to see some beautiful waves this game. Before I crash, you probably get back. So this is definitely something you want to check when you're coming up with loot. You can collect as many chests as you want from however many treasure chests you have from your maps and whatnot. But keep in mind when you come in, this is not a safe haven. If there are other pirates here, they can fight you, take your loot, and turn it in right here at this spot. Simply hold F, sell. Top right hand corner tells you how much it's worth, and then you have a rep well coming up. Tell you how much rep you got didn't give me the 15 but castaway is the smallest castaway is the smallest haul that you can get and at the moment the highest I seen was a captain's which I've gotten upwards to 500 gold out of and that me mates concludes the tutorial I hope you enjoyed it I hope it helps you and if you haven't got the game I recommend it is an amazing game release date would be March 20th if you haven't already gotten to the beta